here today in the 155 Mogami. I've long since gotten past the ship from the line, but I've kept her because she's one of the gems, in my opinion, of the line. She is the tier 8, and she's pretty lightly armored. 25mm 4 deck, and her armor basically doesn't exceed 25mm at any point except this thin 25mm strip right on the side of her upper deck, but the deck itself is still 25. If you strip away the armor, you'll note that, like most Japanese cruisers, she has an enormous above waterline citadel. Which means that you take BBAP, it's probably going to overmatch and punch right through into this citadel. And it's going to hurt. Like her peers, the Mogami and the Arago, uh, and even the Ibuki and the Zao to a certain extent, she has a pretty low hit pool. Just shy of 40,000 in this case, and I'm running her with the 155s. So, the advantages of the 155s here is that you go from you retain the 15 barrels that the Mogami has and a 10 second reload. And so, these actually have a better damage per minute output than the 203s. But the problem is you need IFHE on the 155s to actually penetrate 32mm of armor. And so she needs a specialized dedicated captain. Fortunately for me as a more veteran player, I do happen to have a lot of spare captains lying around. So I've just taken a 15 point commander here and tossed around to the Mogami and this is my dedicated Mogami captain. At certain other points I have had higher point captains. I had an 18 point captain in this Mogami at one point. but I've since stolen that and put her on my Kikaze. But anyhow, with that said, let's hop right into a game. Oh my goodness, I'm running a metric ton of flags. I don't know why I'm doing this, but let's not do that. Flags are for clan warships. Well, it sucks that this is on the recording. Anyhow, let's run her into a battle and see what she's about. So the 155 Mogami, if you've never played any of the American light cruisers, uh, plays somewhat similar to either an American light cruiser, as iterated, or the French light cruisers, so La Galle and Emile Bertin, in that she's extremely fragile, she tends to just eat penetration damage from every angle, no matter what, so you want to be actively dodging, and maneuvering. However, unlike the American light cruisers, she doesn't do that well from cover because her shell arcs are actually quite flat. They're still quite Japanese and the shells themselves uh, travel relatively quickly. So firing from island cover is somewhat more difficult. This is mitigated, however, by her good rudder shift and good concealment. As a Japanese cruiser, she has a concealment of 9.5 kilometers after the concealment expert nerf, and she has um, 8 10 km torpedoes per side on her rear, which means she excels in the open water kiting role. So, here today I'm in a tier 9 game. There's a carrier in battle. That's personal order. Let me just get that out of the way. So, the 155s versus the 203s. What's well, the difference? Well, one, you need a specialized commander. And secondly, the 155s have a god awful turn rate. They used to be much, much worse, something something uh, greater than a battleship, actually. But they've since been buffed to have 36 second base turret traverse for 180 degrees. So now they're just very sluggish cruiser turrets. But all in all, it's quite easy to outturn your turrets in a turn. So you don't want to be getting too close with these unless you absolutely have to. Although with the Japanese HE, they do absolutely murder DDs. So here I spawn on Sea of Fortune. I'm an open water cruiser, so I don't really care about the lineups too much. I do need to pay attention to the battleships. So there's nothing here I can actually bounce. Everyone here has at least 15 inch guns, which means everyone punches through. So that's 380 millimeters for anyone in metric. And that means everyone punches through my 25 millimeter plate. It's also an Alaskan or Boom. And it's going to be more dummy. So here, as in the Mogami, an open water flamethrower, shall we say, 
She's best played similarly to Zao as an open water lurk. You want to just get close enough so that you can bring your HGTPM to bear, but not so close that you can't disengage if you absolutely have to, because dodging is the only real way you have to mitigate the damage. So I'm just going to stalk my Yuganol up to the cap, and if he spots anything for me, I'm just going to open up. I'm using this piece of this island as hard cover. Oh, okay. And we have our first target. So, first shot here, you see the shell arts. Nice and tight, even without the Japanese dispersion buff that the 203s recently got. And 4000 alpha of 8 shells. So these are 152mm uh, shells, but they punch quite a bit harder than their American or French counterparts. Japanese HE is nothing to be trifled with. So she has a upgraded range of 15-7, which can be a bit crippling. It's as much as the Adigo, but the Adigo also kind of suffers when she's down tiered. It's perfectly respectable when you're top tiered. But for a tier 8 cruiser, it's not that great. You see here, at even at max range, the shell velocity is not too bad. I know that Japayev is not exactly presenting the most difficult of targets. But even so, it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, my beauty bar is not torpedoed. That is not very good. So, with our beauty missing, we're going to have to play quite conservatively now. This game might become a bit of a struggle to win. That's alright. Using this position here, so I am kind of island hiding, which you tend to do less of compared to the American cruises. You see there, the shells are still kind of floaty, even though they're faster than American shells. Hmm. So I'm a pretty tricky spot here. I do want to contest the gap. There's a Musashi in range I could be shooting at if I wanted to. I don't believe anything's in range to spot me. Of course, if I'm wrong. If I was wrong there and someone did spot me, say a rogue plane, we'd be in trouble. I'm gonna have to be very careful now because the Izumo is now in my gun range. Which means if I fire while the Izumo is. In my spotting range, I'm gonna get spotted, so I'm just gonna put up there. I was fortunate enough not to get spotted, so we still have a bit more time before we have to move. So, typically, in most Japanese cruisers, sitting still is not what you wanna do, you wanna stay mobile. But in the 155 Mogami, you will find yourself parking and firing from cover quite a bit, because this is a very safe, assured damage, and in a ship this fragile, you do want to try and get your guaranteed safe damage as much as possible. Try to get a fire here. Oh, Just firing into these battleships here, slowing down the push. It's a fire. The team members are slowly dying. I really need to kill that Kirikaze. You can see the. Japanese HE shredding armor, or sorry, shredding modules rather, and also dealing just a ton of damage to the unarmored one in general. It's a bit too close now, can't really hit him anymore. Sadly, he's too close to the island though. We can't deal with him. So Chapayev is in radar range, so I have to be quite careful. He could, in fact, open up on me with the radar. He so chases. Oh dear, something spotted me. Okay, that is very bad because now I'm not moving. There's a uh, possibly quite angry Alaska there. So the two battleships over here are in cover still. So I can slowly play it in a very American fashion, it's hard spotted. 
so that's this foot over there, briefly spotting. So I am actually running a main battery modification too, which slows your reload by 10%. That gives you a bit of extra turret traverse. And this is because I find the turret traverse to be a bit too slow for my tastes. Oh, the planes are flying over the cap. Hopefully they'll spot the Kitakaze. There we go. Let's go for the reset while I have this brief amount of vision. Hopefully one of my shells will brace and excellent. We got the reset. So the cyclones are about to kick in, which is gonna decrease my spawning range by quite a bit. So I have to get my harassment down now. If you'll notice. I have company and I'm completely stopped. They haven't noticed me yet, but I can't sit here forever. So if they'd been paying attention to me, I would have just died right there. Fortunately, they didn't shoot at me. Here I'm chunking, look at that, 6,000 HSL on the unarmored model. Pretty disgusting. Sasha's reversing. Just gonna chuck some. Torpedoes, stay on the monarch. Okay, good. Just empty the salvo. And Masashi's rounding the corner. Time to move. Is that a lethal fire? If that's a lethal fire, I'm gonna disengage. Oh, he's healing. You can see here the gun angles are not fantastic. They're definitely serviceable, but not the greatest thing in the world. I'm very scared of AP shells flying towards my face. Gonna try and disengage. The torpedoes might range out, he's pretty far from me. But... Okay, so if any of these shells touch me, I'm just gonna take the edge. Woo! So you see there, the 25mm armor coming into play. And the slow turret traverse means that my front guns still have yet to traverse. My predictive torps. Slamming into the Masashi over there. Sadly, I can't really see him. But I can spray him using the mini map from this cycle. Because something is spotting him for me. Not quite. I'm gonna aim just ahead of where he is. Okay. Something is spotting him again. I have nothing else to do anyway, so I might as well just spray them out. I'm expecting him to turn in, but in case he doesn't, I'm going to launch towards this direction. Oh, shoot. Okay, so Chapayev is radaring. That means he can shoot me even though I can't... Well, okay, he could have shot me. Even though I can't shoot him, but he got this bash person. Okay, let's go from the screen, huh? Has the Yama um, or the Masashi rather still coming this way? I'm actually gonna dump a second set of torpedoes into the water. Projective top spot him again. Even in the cyclone, keep stay aware of your surroundings. As long as he keeps pushing the corner, he's gonna eat those torps too. And in 30 seconds, my other set will load again. I gotta keep running because the cyclone reduces my spawning range to 8 kilometers, my detection is 9-5. So if I get found by him in the cyclone, I'll get spotted immediately. And as you saw last time, he shot me once. I took 22,000 damage all in one quick salvo. So I'm utterly not interested in any straight up fights with him. I'm a light cruiser with a heavy cruiser hull, and that's not my job. He's blanketing the area behind me again. Doesn't look like I caught him with any of the follow up set. That's fine. 
He may have stopped after eating the torch because he. Okay, he, he didn't stop at all. He's just very reckless. Oh, he should. Can I fire over this? No, I can't. What happens when you need a uh, battleship at close range? I'm gonna launch my fire here to try and get some information. I believe, yes, it's this side that the torps that are loaded. So I'm gonna try to ambush. So I know he's coming around. I kind of need that buffalo corpse to die though, that's the thing. Is that okay? Wait a surprise. Uh, two kilometers, that's pretty close. Can I see if I can get someone to help me spot him? his guns this way now. So, since we did get spotted, we're gonna go around the back. So this is an extremely reckless charge. He should be hard stopping. He's not. Interesting. Why have my fighter in 10 seconds or so? If he travels through this passageway, as I anticipate he might. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this blind without my indicator, so I'm kinda going on instinct here. Gonna hard turn in case I'm too slow. Okay, so you can see where he is now. So that was too early. So he dodged my first set. When he rounds that corner, though, he's not going to be very happy with me. Okay, I was able to dodge the guns. Come on. You can see there the Musashi torpedo belt. Absorbing the vast majority of my uh, damage. It's going to be grim. Permit fire. Ow. Older match mechanics are fun. Kind of fighting the reload here. Three salvos to his every one. Not sure which tubes are loading. Kind of bluffing here. But at the same time, I can't actually bluff. One shot and kill. <sighs> okay, well, that was interesting. Okay, somehow he's got altered. It's kind of annoying. I 
I'm getting no Mogami, but a tier 9. But anyhow, I'm probably going to lose here, unfortunately. But you can see here a little of what the Mogami wants to do in the game. Ugh, my Kaga here is suffering. shit the bed but you can't win them all already dodged that one not the right kill but I'll take it uh there's almost no way we're gonna come back from this because sadly the Kaga is gonna die to the Kitakaze just gonna get shredded but the uh, Kitakaze is 100 millimeters but anyhow, I'm just waiting for the game to end and hopefully I can get this recording out of the way. My goodness though, it's so hard to win a game. But yeah, you saw here, we were playing really slowly, kind of hogging the island for as long as possible, and then eventually we were forced to open water. Sadly, we were opening wa open watering against a very angry Musashi at close range, so we went for a bit of a gamble with... Uh, a bit of island hiding play to try and ambush him with the torpedoes. Uh, sadly, he popped the spotter plane because he's not that unintelligent, so good on him, I suppose. And he got us. He really did get us, even though we really tried hard to fight him. So we go to team score here. Obviously, that happened. Not entertaining. Uh, I have a ton of damage on battleships, not much else here because I didn't have too many other options to shoot here, but. You can see here of the 142,000, most of it is HE Alpha. We have 81,000 HE Alpha here. Uh, this time we happen to have another 31,000 Torpedo Alpha. And considering these are all on the Musashi, this is actually not bad Torpedo Alpha at all. We launched a metric ton of torpedoes because we were able to position in such a way using the Cyclone to try our best to take out the Musashi. Sadly, he's a very, very strong tier 9 with a strong torpedo belt and an enormous hit point pool. So we were unable to do so. But anyhow, uh, that was my Mogami overview, and hopefully if you're struggling with the ship, which is quite a fun one in my opinion, uh, this was helpful to you towards you figuring out what you want to do with it. And that's that. Cheers!